So two years ago, this guy brought in a laptop to get repaired because the screen wasn't functioning and there was no light on it. So even when it did display an image, which it almost never did, there was no light. So I looked at him and I said, it would be $150 to, f to fix this problem for you. Does that sound agreeable after about a five minute inspection of the computer? And he goes, oh, absolutely. That would be great, man. This other place charged me 60 bucks just to open it and they didn't do shit. Yeah, go ahead. 150 sounds great. So I go ahead and open it. And it was obvious that this, this thing was opened by the most ham-fisted clusterfuck in the world because, you know, there were wires going onto the motherboard, shit was plugged in upside down, and over a course of three hours I drove myself crazy putting this back together properly because it, it, it was just miserable. Every time I would put it back together and one thing would work, something else would stop working. So I wound up taking apart every single por portion of the machine and just putting it back together from scratch. And three hours later I call him back and I tell him, everything works, you can come pick up your computer now, that'll be 150 bucks. So he comes in, and he's all happy, and he's looking at it, and he's, you know, he's doing what people do when they come to pick up their laptop. He's making sure that everything works, he's moving it back and forth, and he takes his wallet, and he's like, okay, so, uh, so what did you replace? And I go, nothing. And you could literally see his wallet start to move back towards him like a defense mechanism, and he goes, oh, so that, that's not going to be $150, right? Like, he said it in that voice that I would expect from if I was holding a, a knife to the, the throat of his firstborn child, going, you're not going to kill him, he's my son, right? And I go, well, yes, it's going to be $150. Uh, you agreed to $150 when you left off the computer. I fixed the problem that you had with the computer, and I did it within a much earlier than the specified time frame. So, uh, pay up. And we get into this 15-minute argument over it because, where he's going on about how he's going to call the Better Business Bureau on me, he's going to call the Department of Consumer Affairs, he's going to leave a bad Yelp, and Google, and City Search reviews, and all that fuck shit. And I go, you know what? That's a great idea. Why don't you file a claim with the Better Business Bureau and the Department of Consumer Affairs saying you brought your laptop in and were told it would be 150 to fix and that within three hours they actually fixed it and only charged you 150 you know what, that's such a great case, maybe Johnny Cochran and Rob Kardashian will allow you to escalate it to the Supreme Court and try to sue me, because I'm such a rip -off. You know, and, and then he left after paying me, and I get this um, one-star review going on and on about, This guy is such a sarcastic prick. He charged me $150 to fix my computer, and he didn't even replace anything. He's an asshole, and, you know, they went getting deleted by Google and Yelp because they could tell that he was as retarded as I could tell he was. So, moving on. The guy I was working with at the time, his name was John, and he, while I am an idealist, he is more practical and wise when it comes to, to business. The second this guy asked, what did you replace, and I told him, nothing, John looks at me like, oh, dude, why did you do this to yourself? Why do you always do this to yourself? Why don't you just make something up? Because he knew. I could have just looked at the guy and said, the stapler inside your computer malfunctioned. You need a new stapler. A new stapler would be $150, including parts, and uh, everything is going to work. So this is what I replaced. Here you go. And I could have just grabbed a broken stapler out of my bit of staplers and said, here's what I replaced in your computer. And he would have been very happy and left, and I wouldn't have had any arguments, any one-star of you, any arguing, but I decided to actually tell the truth. And because I decided to tell the truth, I fucked myself, because this particular person had no desire to pay for a service. Yes, dare I actually charge money for the fact that I know what I'm doing, and I'm providing a service? No, no, that's not worth money. He needed to pay for something that was tangible. He needed to pay for something that he could see, and lift, and, you know, look at. Something that electricity passed through, not the service or a skill. <laughs> Skills aren't worth money. Who the fuck do you think you are? So I decided to be honest, and I screwed myself. This comes down to a simple concept in the repair world, which is why technicians and mechanics lie their ass off all the time. People are very, very often willing to pay for a positive outcome, and they're willing to pay hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands of dollars for a positive outcome. But if they know how you got to the positive outcome, they will go so far as to file Better Business Bureau claims against you for, for, you know, for what you did. They are very, very happy to pay for you to fix their car, but if they realize that you fixed their car by, by kicking it, you're not going to get any money out of them. And the second reason is that people in, in this field, nobody gets the respect that they deserve. Not from their parents, their sisters, their brothers, not from their co-workers, not from um, 
their clients, not from their friends. Nobody respects this profession. People simply think you're waving your hand over something and making it work again, and that you're just this big, incredible dick if you're actually charging money for it because it's just so easier. Like, that's why people are always calling people in this profession geniuses, even though we're just idiots with screwdrivers. It's like, oh, you're a genius. I can never do that. Be and the reason that people are always going, wow, you're a genius. Oh, my God, you're a genius. Your parents must have been so proud of you. The reason people are always saying that is because what's difficult to them, seem, it, it seems like a genius would have to do it. It makes them feel better about themselves. That guy who was cursing me out, he probably gets $150 in eight hours of work, whereas I got $150 in one or two hours of work. And that, that really kind of may have pissed him off on some sort of personal level. And there are a lot of people that you're going to meet that are like this, that are happy to pay for a service, but they're really unhappy to, for paying for what they perceive to be something simple, even if it isn't simple. And the way that most technicians get around this is by lying their goddamn asses off all day and making up white lies like crazy to cover themselves from dealing with these situations. I'm not saying that it's right to be a lying technician. What I'm trying to do is shed light onto why technicians and mechanics often lie. Because a lot of people just think that technicians just sat in a room one day when computers came out and went, let's screw everybody over who, who uh, buys a computer. Yes, that's a great idea. We'll get rich. It didn't really start out that way. It probably started out from people doing repairs and noticing that after somebody agreed to pay that they weren't really willing to. Or they may have watched the repair as it went down and said, I'm not paying for that, it's easy. You know, all they did is do this, when you know that, in, that that customer would not have done this in a million years. And they probably would have done nothing or they would have done that instead and you know their car would have went on fire, taking, and killing them with it. People don't often don't want to pay when they know what it is you did. So lying makes life a lot easier. Now, let's say that, uh, let's say 10% of your customers argue. This is a volume-based business. I need to get 20 to 30 of these fucking things in and out of here every day in order to keep paying my rent and keep paying my staff. So let's say that's three arguments a day. Let's say each argument comes out to a ha 10 minutes. That's a half hour a day that I spend arguing instead of fixing computers. So instead of fixing this computer, I'm arguing with somebody to get paid or negotiating because they don't want to pay. Now, that is doing a disservice to my clients. My clients are now waiting longer and getting slower repairs done because I'm spending more time arguing than I'm spending fixing computers. Then, I'm doing a disservice to myself. That guy who left, left a terrible review. And there are some people that don't leave terrible reviews, they just don't come back because they perceive the service as a ripoff because I charged money for a service, not a service in a part. They don't leave a positive review and they don't tell their friends to come here. Now the business makes less money. Now I'm doing myself a disservice as the business owner. I'm doing my employees a disservice because their bonuses are going to be lower. All because I decided to tell the truth. Because I decided to tell the truth, I'm doing a disservice to my business, my staff, my clients, and myself. But this is a compromise that I'm willing to make to remain honest. The way I run my shop, I don't care if people see what I'm doing, and I don't care if they perceive it as easy. I have a front area for repair where somebody can sit and very clearly view exactly what I'm doing. There's not a back room meant to hide it so that it looks very, very difficult. Uh, if I ask somebody, Are you, if I can fix your computer, would that be worth $50? And they go, yes. I don't care if the way I fix their computer is by taking these two little pins on the board and going doink and doink. And I am more than happy to look at them with confidence when I say that is going to be $50. I can live with them being irritated and mad and pissed off that it was fifty dollars for me to go. I can live with that. What I can't live with is knowing that I came up with some ridiculous barrage of bullshit to get the fifty dollars out of them. Both of them are not ideal, but I could live with the first one better than I could live with the second one. Because in the first one, they're the dick. In the second one, I'm the dick. I don't really want to be the dick. In conclusion, lying as a technician or a mechanic very often makes life easier, it makes work more practical, it makes customers happier, and it allows you to make more money. Honestly, because more people will approve of repairs if they don't think they're paying for you to just bank something. But it's not quite the right thing to do, and that's why I don't do it.